Five years ago uh, is when we really started to see the deterioration, pieces falling off the building. And the congregation took a vote that they decided to, you know, the, the vote was leave, go somewhere else, or stay here and, and fix the building. So it was pretty pretty good vote where to stay here and repair the building. So at that point, we started to take steps to work toward what we're doing now. Now there's two more. The next phase I'm hoping is our corner tower, which is the bell tower and the window in between the two towers. And then the, the next phase would be the part from the chime tower up Mock Chunk Street to the corner. Uh, those two, there are two areas that are planned at this time, but there's always more work to do after that. Yeah. The restoration. Uh, the building's been constructed over 100 years. It's been basically made up of three materials, uh, granite stone, limestone, and cementus areas. And the cementus areas are the areas that are breaking down now. We've been told that they basically have a 100-year lifespan, and we're around 100 years that the building's up. So through the years, the uh, cement has been cracking, and water would get in, freeze, and and deteriorate the cement. So we hired a contractor. Uh, I guess we started the, the repairs two years ago and we did the Greenwood Street side and they basically removed all the loose materials, cleaned and treated the areas and built it back up again to as close to original as they could determine. You know, as Mark uh, mentioned a couple minutes ago, uh, the pace at which we're able to complete this project will depend, again, on uh, how much money we're able to raise in uh, uh, within a certain you know period of time. And uh, so, but we are eager to you know to finish this project. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, to the congregation's credit and to our minister's leadership, um, we're developing new programs, offering more services to the community. Uh, and uh, you know that may have um, that may have you know uh, that may be a, a factor in terms of the community's response to to Very our hard. surprise. I mean, uh, first of all, it's I think it's important to keep in mind that <clears throat> the folks that make up our capital campaign committee are of course members of our congregation, people who have never done this kind of work before. Uh, now, as we've uh, grown. Uh, in our um, efforts to raise money, we have learned more about uh, how a capital campaign uh, should be run, or how the professionals run them, if you will. And we have talked to consultants um, who have given, a lot, given us a lot of insights on how to run the campaign, and that's been very, very helpful. Um, so we're growing as the campaign is growing, and uh, um, we're just, looking forward to continue to raise the additional monies so that we can complete our churches, um, the restoration of our churches. Lots of our community, uh, again, both our members uh, and those folks that are not um, members of uh, this particular church, uh, in their generosity uh, and their support of this campaign. And uh, for those reasons, I'm very optimistic that we're gonna be able to you know, raise the amount of money that we need in order to finish our rest yeah, I mean, well, it's just the fact of being involved in such a, a huge project, I mean, it's reward itself just to see it progress and, and hopefully come to completion. Oh, it's, it's just a fabulous feeling. Um, you know, I was born and raised in the Tamako community, and my experience always has been that the community really sticks together. Uh, for example, we recently had a, a fundraising a dinner, um, social event uh, that helped support our local fire company, that wanted to su help support one of our local fire companies. And uh, so we really try to use every opportunity that we can to give back to the community. And of course, in turn, we're finding out that the community um, is willing to reciprocate when, in any way that they can by giving back to the church.